Hi, Melissa. My name's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me today and for allowing me to use you as a model to practice on during my new venture, which is returning to holistic therapies. And what I want to do today is focus on you and in particular focus on your scalp. Um, this would normally form part of an Indian head massage. And as I said, I haven't done that for a very long time. So I'm just letting myself, it reintroduce myself to holistic therapies gently. So I'm just gonna start with building up my skill in this area again, which I used to love. One of my favorite, favorite treatments was Indian head massage. And this scalp treatment would be part of a much wider Indian head massage treatment. So this one just focuses on part of that whole therapy. Um, and this one focuses on your hair and your scalp. So I'm just going to really just play around with your hair for a little bit because it's absolutely glorious hair here. Um, and just keep running my fingers through it. You've got a few knots in there. So what I'm going to do is take a brush. Now this is actually a wet brush. So it's for actually when you've got wet hair to take out knots, but I just think it really goes through your hair so beautifully. So if you start at the bottom and then just brush it and you find that can hear that you can hear where it's tugging on the knots that you've got at the very bottom there and then if we get that all nice and smooth it means I can run my fingers through without it causing any sort of um, glitches in terms of hitting knots in your hair um, and it, it actually makes it a much more soothing massage as you comb fingers through your hair then Okay, so you can hear where it's catching on some of the knots at the very bottom. And then suddenly it becomes all smooth. And I do find with these wet brushes, they work really well. Though, as I said, they're designed for wet hair, but for this particular aspect, it seems to get knots out more easily. And then once you've done that, I can introduce my hands to your scalp and your hair. There we go. How does that feel? It's really relaxing. Really relaxing. I would have ended up closing my eyes. Oh no. <laughs> Okay. That's good. That's good. That's yeah. good. Of course. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Just relax and enjoy it. It's a very special massage. Um, one that's been around for hundreds of years, and as you can tell by the name, obviously began in India, where um, generations of women used to massage each other's hair, and it was very much focused on the scalp and the hair. Um, and if you look at um, women from India, their hair is always luxurious. It's got a thickness about it. And this sort of massaging each other's hair, you can imagine sort of on the doorstep, the grandmother massaging the grandchild or the mother massaging through the daughter's hair, often with oils as well. We're not going to use oils today, but um, you can use um, certain types of carrier oils. Um, things like almond oil and coconut oil work really, really well. And that really encourages healthy hair. And I think that's where the luxury um, scalp massages come from. Um, there's a more modern version, which is known as Indian head massage, champassage, and that's where you start introducing other aspects of the body, which maybe I'll move on to once you help me get my confidence back a bit more. Okay, so now that you've got used to me touching your scalp and playing around with your hair, I'm just going to lightly tug slightly on this 
right side here. Don't tug too much, it's just almost that you're introducing your hands to the hair and the scalp. But it's quite relaxing, even that tiny little tug that I'm doing is a bit of de-stressing. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to run my fingers through your hair again. See, there are no knots in this now. It makes such a difference. Beautiful length to it as well. Okay. Right. Just do a little bit of gentle effleurage. Just to start off nicely. Right, and then I'm going to start with some heel rubbing around ears and I'll start with the right ear. And then I'll move over to the left ear. And the heel's nice and soft. It doesn't give too much pressure because this is a really sensitive area of the head. And then I'm going to use a little bit of friction here as well, which is here. Keep one hand on one side and then you feel comfortable with it being held in place. So you don't want the head wobbling. I'm just going to do a bit of rubbing across the whole scalp like this. That just helps to get rid of any tension from these areas. I'm going to go up. ruffles like this. And I'm going to go right under your hair like it's massaging the whole head, both sides. Do tell me if I pull too hard or anything like that. Okay. If there's any pain at all. Oh, it feels really nice. Good. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up and I'm going to slightly tug let me know if it's too much. It's done very gently but the pulling just stimulates the whole scalp area. Then 
tapping on the top, what we'll do here is do something called a piano tapping move. And that again just stimulates the whole area. I'm trying to cover the whole scalp and avoid getting dangling in the hair. <laughs> as though you're playing a piano. Right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to very gently put your head to one side. I'm going to press slightly on what we call the pressure points around the ears here, just very slightly. Move to the other side. and just rebrush your hair if that's okay. It's got very naughty, so I'm just gonna do this for a little bit. Yeah, my hair's quite thin, it gets knotted really easily. Yes, yeah. But I just want you to get the benefit of the last moves. And to do that, we'll take some of the knots out. It's really nice having someone brush my hair. Is it? Yeah, I really like it. I don't think that this was a move that I'm supposed to be doing, but I've just added it in because instinctively I felt you needed it. Oh, thank you. So I think sometimes you just have to be guided by what you think your client needs. Maybe that helps to release some of the tension you've got in your... Um, scalp particularly at the lower part you've got quite a lot of tension there so I want you to get the full benefit without me getting stuck in knots in your hair and this just helps to take it out there we are back to beautifully unknotty hair slightly off piece but there you go. Right so I'm just going to do a sort of squeeze and lift motion and that's just behind your ears there and then I'm going to do that on one side so that I can get some a little bit of pressure there. But this area is so sensitive you, it, it's such a light touch that you need there we go, let's do a couple more of those. You can feel how sensitive that area is so you don't really need a lot. We'll do that on the other side as well. Yeah, 
really reacting well to this sort of gentle massage. ask you to breathe in with me and just relax to in and out and again last time Beautiful. There we go. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Welcome. Today we have a lovely treatment planned, which is an adapted Indian head massage, focusing on the back so that you can see the moves in a lot more detail. And then moving on so that you can see how the moves on the scalp look from the back view, which sometimes when you're doing seated Indian head massage, you can't actually see. So we did a consultation earlier and we decided on which oils to use, which I'm going to blend shortly. But I just want to talk about those oils in particular and why we've chosen those because it's not always necessary to do essential oils for an Indian head massage. A good base oil is often all you need and in fact in this instance having discussed during the consultation we've decided on avocado oil as the base oil and avocado has some really lovely properties it's designed to improve overall health hair as it contains natural fatty acids and these can help with a damage that is has been done to the cuticles it also really helps to hydrate the hair, um, helping to lock in moisture. If you are doing a massage without essential oils, then other suitable oils would be things like almond oil or coconut oil. Um, do be cautious, obviously, if somebody has an allergy, so take that on board. Even something like mustard oil, if you're trying to stimulate the scalp, is a good one to use. So you can either choose to limit adding essential oils into that barrier oil, um, or you can either get a pre-blended oil which has some essential oils mixed in or you can ask a th an aromatherapist to blend an oil blend for you. So in consultation we have decided to add in a few essential oils 
and taking on board the state of the health and the well-being of the client, we've decided to use some classic essential oils and mix those in to the avocado oil. So the first one we decided on was tea tree, which has a very cleansing air to it, which is antibacterial and is good for maybe anti-dandruff. Do check the concentration of any tea tree oil that you are purchasing because some of it comes in quite strong forms and for something like this you would only need maybe one drop. What we've also decided to add in is Ylang Ylang which is especially good for dry scalp so if you've got any dry areas on the scalp Ylang Ylang would help with that alongside the avocado oil. And one of the other oils we've decided to add in is rosemary. Rosemary is a favourite for hair thickness and hair growth and promotes healing. Some other ones that you could potentially use are lavender, cedar wood is very good as well, peppermint, as long as they are diluted into a base oil. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make that blend up so that we've got enough just to do this adapted Indian head massage which is focusing on the top of the back, the shoulders, the scalp and sides of the face. Okay, I'm just going to move over now to blend the oil. So we're taking the avocado oil and I love these little miniature jugs which just allow you to have a limited amount in there so you don't waste any product. And then literally I drop each of your lang ylang. So two drops went in there. It is very hard to judge. So let's just try and get one. That's rosemary. Then you've got tea tree. Okay. If you feel like too many drops have gone in, then you can always dilute it with some more barrier oil in there. Stir that up so that it's well blended. Can smell that. You can even get your client to smell this and make sure that they are happy with the blend. And then what we're going to do so that there's a clear view of the back is we're going to move to the side so that the moves on the back are very noticeable. So we've got enough in the hands to cover this back area. And just do some gentle effleurage moves around the back. And then we're just going to focus on any stress areas that are in this block here. I've 
lots of crunchiness going on, which you really want to aim to get rid of. So just some nice thumb sweeping moves here. To help the oils penetrate into the skin. So I can already feel some crunchiness in those areas there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some what we call heel of hand frictions round the scapula area. I can already feel that this area is one that is used a lot and needs that specific focus. stimulate that area a little bit more. Some hand frictions. knuckling move. Really, really digging in quite deeply to get rid of anything. But we don't go right on the spine, it's either side of the spine. over these shoulders. Get rid of those last bits of crunchiness there. And just some finger pulls to get any lasting tension out of that area. should really help get rid of anything that's left in terms of tension in those areas. And hopefully that shares some of the moves that we've been doing at the back, where if you're doing a seated Indian head massage you can't see, but that's really what you would be doing on the back. version I'm just going to move and just do the top of the arms as well. So just pouring on a little bit more oil of our lovely blend. And we're not going to go right down, we're just going to do the tops of the arms. Just shoulder to elbow.
just so that we get rid of any stress and tension in these areas. Obviously if you were doing a seated massage you would go right down to the very bottom of the arms and include a hand massage as well. But really today we're just trying to show what maybe you cannot and have not been able to see in some of the other massages that we've done, which has focused very much on the front. is a replacement move for the forearm soothing that you would normally do but this is perfectly adequate as an adapted version of that right now what we're going to do is move on to the other areas of the scalp. So again, a nice drop of the pre the blended oil. Into the hair. And you can put on as much oil as you need. a little bit about the neck area there and the occipital just some gentle moves to cover that area taking you up into focusing on the scalp we're going to start with doing some heel rubbings around the ear. And it's going to look very different to a normal Indian head massage because you would see this move. If you had your cameras at the front, you would see this from the front view, whereas this time you're actually seeing it from the back of the head. It's almost like getting a completely different view. Right, we're going to go in and do some finger frictions. And obviously because your client is secure on the bed, can be quite vigorous with these finger frictions because you've not got to hold the head as you would in a sitting move. Just do some rubbing moves. Make sure you get towards the and chakra as well to clear that. Very gently. And then friction across the whole head.
favourite mood for some people, raindrops or piano tapping. create quite a nice tingly sensation when you're doing that. So speed that up. Then what we're going to do is do some slight pressure moves on the ears. point areas stimulate that scalp and that hair growth and the blood flow all helps to relieve stress and induce relaxation get rid of those stress hormones increase those relaxation hormones Then just gentle massage on the ears. The one difference you are going to have is that you can't obviously do the face when your client is facing down like this. What you can do is do the ears and you can actually go in and just do the pressure points at the sides of the face. Because by this point, your client may well be asleep and you don't really want to ask them to move. And I feel like my model is asleep. Just lots of palmer moves there. Just finish up on these ears again. your client is awake, get them to breathe with you and go through aftercare. In this case, plenty of water and relaxation is encouraged. No heavy meals, preferably no alcohol for a while. And then try and leave the oil on the hair so that it can penetrate. And there you are, a lovely adapted Indian head massage with your client face down, still managing to do those restful moves. Thank you very much, Melissa, for coming along Thank today. You. Thank you for having me. That's okay. So the feedback from the last treatment that I did on you was very welcomed by people. But they would like me to do it in a slightly lower voice, as in so that I don't disturb and talk too loudly. So I thought I would try just taking my voice level down a bit and seeing what impact that has. I'm really focusing on the treatment of the scalp massage that I'm going to give you. So what I'm going to do is start with just brushing your hair 
with this wonderful wet brush that I've still got and still using. So get all the knots out of your hair. Start at the bottom because your hair's a bit knotty at the bottom here. enjoys what they're doing. Yeah. I really feel that. It's brought back good memories from over a decade ago when I used to do this and then have to give it up. But now, hopefully, I'm back. Once I get the hang of things again. There we go. I'm always happy to be a guinea pig. Oh, thank you. A useful guinea pig as well. Right, I'm just going to start with introducing my hands to your scalp and your hair. and that scalp up. Little bit of rubbing across the scalp. Hold a lot of just loosens it up. If your head's wobbling slightly, you have to hold on one side. So that's why I've separated it out. Give your hair a slight tug as I do this, just to release some more tension. Just like this, it's very 
stress relieving. Just going to do a little bit of what we call piano tapping. So you're playing the piano. stress reliever, especially if you've got headaches. Do that on the other side as well. brushing your hair out because it's got very knotty and I think the massage works nicely on you when you have brushed hair. Okay, now remember this from last time, it gets very knotty. My hair is very thin, yeah. very tangly. But just the last part of the massage to make sure that you get the benefit. You don't want loads of knots in it. Beautiful hair still. Thank you. The hairbrush feels really nice on my scalp as well. Yeah. It's like you're encouraging the blood flow. And stuff. Yes, absolutely. Did this into my routine. It's not normally part of this part of the Indian head massage, scalp massage. It's one of the bit I've added in. massage around where you've got a few stress knots at the base of your occipital there.
last one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Work today on just covering some basic elements of hair care and talking about health care in your hair, a little bit of the scalp and then what I'm going to culminate in doing is a mask, a conditioning mask on this wonderful hair. So I'm just going to start with brushing the hair here. So that we've got a smooth hair to work with. And the aim today is to really get some conditioning into this hair. Because the hair is dyed, it has dried out the hair quite a bit. So we're going to do, in the end, a deep condition mask on the hair. Which is really going to help it. So hair can often reflect your general health and really looking after your hair can really help you feel better about yourself and looking after it, giving it that little bit of extra attention can really help with your overall sense of well-being. So the greatest things that you can do to have really good hair is obviously focus on having a nourishing diet, getting some good exercise and some really restorative sleep. Those are the key things and when you don't have these elements in your life. Unfortunately it does show and it shows in particular in your hair. So really working on those aspects of your well-being can really really help you feel better about yourself and your hair. So massage is obviously a key way of really helping with the well-being of your hair. Which is why I would recommend a scalp massage or Indian head. If you visit the hairdressers these days, they often do a little bit of a, a massage. Even a brief massage will help with the restorative nature. Any form of massage though that stimulates the scalp will help with the health of your hair. And loose muscles on the scalp will help with blood flow and that improves circulation and promotes healing in the scalp area. Obviously there are other products that can really help. Shampoos, if you try and make sure they are as natural as possible. When I first learned about Indian head massage, one of the books that I read was by the Indian head massage guru, Narendra Mehta. And he focuses a whole chapter in his book on hair health and has lots of really, really good advice. One of those pieces of advice that I took on board was to really use 
a shampoo that was as natural and as free from chemicals as possible. I mean, obviously, you do need some chemical elements in to have that cleansing element, but if there's a way that you can keep them to as minimum as possible, that would be better. So natural products where possible. Always choose a gentle shampoo if you can and make sure that it's rinsed out well from your hair and that you've got a suitable conditioner. And what we're going to do today is do a, a deep massage treatment using a conditioning coconut and macadamia nut mask. Okay, but do watch out because there's lots of broken hair here. So when you wash your hair, wrap the towel around it without wringing your hair out. Wet hair is extremely fragile and can break very easily and then comb using a very good comb or a wet brush like this one that will get through the hair easily without getting constantly caught because that will just damage the hair. And then keeping it conditioned along with all those other things that we talked about in terms of nutrition and exercise and good sleep will really help. Just giving the hair a little bit of attention or finding somebody to brush your hair can also be relaxing and encourage that sense of well-being it improves that sort of sense of calmness and relaxation. That is part of that promotion of general well-being and health. Relieving all that muscle tension that might be in your scalp. Right, what I am going to do now is just look and check at the scalp health here, just so that we can get a little bit more in-depth view of the scalp. And in particular, because of the dye, there are just patchiness of dryness. So although the hair might feel slightly oily and in need of washing, actually when you look at the scalp, there are elements of dryness, patches of dryness. which with a good conditioning mask that will really help. So help with the scalp and the hair care and make the hair feel really soft as well. So dual purpose. Can't see anything else major. Literally it's just a little bit of, dyna, of dryness and that is from the dyeing colouring. Okay. Right, so we're going to move into applying the hair mask now and we'll do that in sections. So 
So I'm just going to take the coconut and macadamia nut that I mentioned before. Obviously do be careful. If you've got nut allergies, obviously don't use this one, use one that's nut free. And then we're just going to start applying this. And then once you get towards the end of your fingers, just blend that all in. So just that you get everything covered. And then just take another section. And be careful not to tug on the hair too much. And be as generous as you can be. product. I'm not a trained hairdresser so I just go on instinct on doing something like this. But anything that promotes Good hair care, good conditioning. If you've got somebody else to do that, you can do this equally at home. Or do this yourself. physical move here can help relieve stress and tension in your head. Right, keep going round. Do the bottom bit first. particularly drying on the ends. So if you can make sure that you get this on the ends, really helps. And then once you've got this all on the hair, you can rub it in to the scalp a bit more as well. So you don't need to be an expert to put this on, but there's nothing full in these ingredients. So be generous with that. It's just an opportunity to condition that hair and at the same time get some relaxation in. What you can also think about with your hair is there's all sorts of herbal treatments that you can do. For example, if you can get a blend with rosemary oil in, that can really help. You can get a pre-blended version of some herbal remedies and massage that into your hair or just do something like a rosemary infusion which can really help. Right, slowly getting the hair. Fabulously long hair. But actually it's quite relaxing while you're doing it. I'm being particularly fussy with a spatula, but you can put this straight on with your fingers if you want to, if it's easier. Just make as sure, as I said, that you're not tugging or pulling too much. 
that's why it's very important that you do some very clear brushing at the start. And get plenty on the scalp hair, which you're going to rub in shortly. Coconut blend, obviously, with macadamia is a very natural that very natural ingredients was as natural as you can get. As I said, a lot of shampoos and conditioners you find have got some form of chemicals in. It's quite difficult to get natural ones that certainly are reasonably priced. But if you want your hair to look good, I think it's worth doing this extra blend. So if you've got any remaining left, then just rub that into the scalp area. So you get a wonderful condition. On that. And then what you want to do is just leave this for as long as you want, as long as you feel comfortable. Leave that in, particularly with those ends there. A bit more in those ends. Then what I'm going to do is get the client to wash, to leave that on for a little while, then wash and dry and then we'll talk about aftercare. Right, okay. So thank you for removing that mask off your hair and drying your hair. That gives me the opportunity to focus on a bit of aftercare. But first of all, I just want to run a brush through that hair and you can see the difference that that hair mask has actually made in comparison to how I was struggling to brush the hair earlier. It's going straight through. So it has made a huge difference. There's barely any stoppages at all there. So a huge difference terms of before so we've already got to the smoothness that we had which took me ages to get to at the beginning of the video okay so now that looks absolutely glorious what I want to do is just talk to you a little bit more about aftercare and in particular I want you to think about how you're actually washing your hair uh, really to avoid things like breakages so when you it's more actually when you're drying your hair people start twisting it turning the hair and that can really cause breakages because the hair actually swells when it's wet as well so you want it to be you want it to be very careful that you don't encourage breakages, particularly if your hair is fragile. So that's one little tip there. So just wrap the hair in the towel and obviously go through it with either a wet brush or tangle tease is another one that's been recommended or a very fine comb which has thick prongs on it, which can go through and help you with knots, etc. But do try to deep condition as well. Um, similar to what we did today, using as natural as products as possible. The one we used today was natural origin ingredients is 98%. So that's pretty good going but really think about what you're purchasing in terms of putting on your hair, avoiding chemicals, if at all possible. So also think about your overall health, because as I said earlier, that could be really reflected in your hair. So think about your wellness generally. 
the vitamins and minerals that you're taking for the hair in particular, something like silica or vitamin B is very good for hair and in particular for stimulating hair growth. And herbal treatments such as shampoos with those sorts of ingredients in, such as herbs, can really help to strengthen damaged and fragile hair in particular. And obviously one of the things that I would always encourage is a head or scalp massage with or without oils. If you want to do it with oils yourself, either use something that's pre-blended and be very careful if you are blending essential oils because some of them, as I've mentioned before, could be quite toxic. So you don't want a reaction on your scalp. But definitely Indian head massage I would really recommend as that really encourages hair growth, stimulates that wonderful lymphatic system that we have which is responsible for supplying and draining excess fluid, plays a crucial role in things like protection against disease and infection and again with things like that I would always encourage you to try and squeeze in a massage to de-stress and anything like that will show in your hair so your general sense of well-being will show overall in your hair and you can see here that mask has made a significant impact particularly on the ends here that were very very dry and this is going to make the hair look fantastic and make you look full of health and well-being.